Good morning, this is Jason Dean coming live at you for another big edition of Film Fanatic. It is uh, Thursday at about 11 o'clock already. So, yeah, pretty cold and wintry day. Um, so, want to thank again, there's been a whole new uh, batch of people who have been subscribing to uh, my channel, who... Uh, see some fun in my madness and I really appreciate it and I've been interacting with some newer folks on YouTube who have been commenting on the videos uh, I really love that I have a deep you know deep love uh, and appreciation for film and I love being able to for what it's worth being able to share that to the public you know looking back at last year in 2023 it's been you know a, a quite a little bit of a journey for my venture into covering movies you know about five years ago well i should say about actually seven years ago i started i had talked with a couple of friends about maybe the idea uh because they all knew that i was really into film and i talked with a couple of friends about what do you guys think about me if i started uh you know a facebook page uh just about movies and I had a couple of friends say, yeah, you should definitely do that. You know, you, you're you really passionate about films. You love films, so why not do it? So so then I did. I set up a, a Film Fanatic. Um, it was, or it still is, obviously called Film Fanatic. I, started, I, I set up a Facebook page, and it was a blast. It was a lot of fun, and I was reviewing movies, talking a lot about mostly newer films at the time, and I did that for a few years. Quite a few years and then i had this feeling of wanting to kind of go a little bit further and then i started doing the facebook live videos and um and that was a lot of fun because i had never uh really felt comfortable speaking in public or on camera and all of those things i've always felt it's uh, like a hurdle for me but i wanted to kind of do it to kind of push it a little bit more and i so i started doing the facebook live videos and it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot and I got, I noticed over some, you know, over a period of time, I started getting some extra traction uh, with the, with the page and, you know, quite a few people were responding to the videos and watching the videos and I did that for a while and then I started doing interview segments. I had a few guests on the show and it was great. It was a lot of fun, a lot to learn, um, you know, especially on the tech side and then so that spurred on the idea of eventually doing uh, I eventually, after that, started actually writing reviews, formal uh, written reviews that were published online and that they are actual uh, publications. I started writing reviews, film reviews for Opera House Video, which is my favorite and really the only video shop here in Maine. And I still go there, have a great connection with those guys, Dennis Howard. So I started writing these reviews and I did that whole kind of kind of a job for about probably about a year and a half and that was a lot of fun again a whole nother thing to learn um about so i did that and you know did a bunch of reviews and you know in, in these published in this published format so that was a lot of fun and then that led to me wanting to kind of do some new things and that's what started this youtube channel so and since then i have really uh really enjoyed this probably the most um, I think the quality is a little bit better and it's, it's a, a lot easier for me to do. And with, you know, there's a bunch of other reasons behind it too, but I just felt like it feels, it feels more comfortable to do it this way. So now what I've done is I've made my focus just with this channel and I still update and still post tons of videos and reviews to, uh, and I also along the way started an Instagram page main at film fanatic where that's all reviews and there are some videos on there but i still run the facebook page which i put reviews on there all the time and then there's lots of videos from my youtube channel on there i also post a lot of the videos on my own personal facebook page and then i do reviews for all three of uh, that are posted on all three pages um and I just became an administrator for a a movie page on Facebook, which is a fourth page, because I do post on it, and then I was asked if I wanted to be an, uh, an administrator for that. So that's a lot of fun. So that's another thing that I'm going to be doing 
uh, a little bit more. So it's a blast, and I, you know, I really thank um, the public and the people coming in and checking out my weird videos. Uh, again, it's something I, you know, love, 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 love so much, and it really means a lot to me to do these videos and to just talk about movies that you know maybe you don't hear about. I try to cover and mix things up all the time. You know, my, my favorite style is, of course, and I've mentioned before, is the grindhouse, exploitation world. That's what I try to make my focus primarily on, bringing light to films that are not really talked about mainly. But again, I have lots of different tastes, and so today is an example of that. And and I have a funny history with this. So I just finished, and I, am, and I realize this is probably, you know, one of the most probably it's probably the most popular show that's come out in the last you know 10 years or 15 years and that is game of thrones so i finished the first season the other night and i realized how behind uh the ball i am i originally did see i watched it's probably about six or seven years ago i watched till about i think i made it till about the third season bunch of things happen and blah 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 and then I never finished it and but one of the things I wanted to do this winter was to actually sit down and watch this series and I've talked a lot about this in previous videos where I I acknowledge and really do believe that you know as far as television shows you know you have Netflix Hulu and all these you know companies that are now that are streaming platforms but they're putting out all of their own tv shows you know there are a there are many great tv shows out there um my favorite network which is the the network that created game of thrones hbo which is the best um there's so many great television shows i think it's almost to the point while well, i think it's it is overwhelming but i also feel the thing that biggest factor for me was the length of TV shows where you have series some shows or series that last for years uh, The Walking Dead which has been on for I don't know 50 years uh, and Game of Thrones was on for a very very long time and there's a bunch of other shows that were on on for years so that to me has always been daunting whereas I love movies so much because it's the it's that immediate experience, like you're one and done. Unless you're, you know, watching a trilogy or uh, a franchise. Obviously, it's almost the same kind of thing. But there's still that beginning, middle, and end. And it's just that aspect of where it doesn't keep going and going and going. Even if the writing is so good, that factor has always been the most kind of intimidating to me. And I have had problems finishing shows because of that. The one One show, for example, again, which I thought was fantastic but i could not finish it because i just felt um i was checking out because of fatigue and that was um breaking bad really great show fantastic show and uh, i think part of me is slowly changing my tune around around how i view television shows and i think i might eventually watch that at some point finish it so, but Game of Thrones is one of those shows that I really wanted to get to, and I have set out as a goal this winter to actually watch all of the Game of Thrones. I believe there's like nine seasons, eight seasons, and so I finished the first season last night, and or actually two couple days ago, and I just started the second season. So today's show is going to be on this little unknown TV show called Game of Thrones, and um it's you know again as i get started i tried watching this series we tried doing it with, i had a couple of friends who we were going to do the same thing but i found it was you know really hard to and again i love them to death but i'm not knocking them but i found when we started to watch it we started watching it around Christmas time. You know, I was totally into it. And we're trying to figure out we're going to get takeout and all this stuff. But it became, like, harder to plan things. It became kind of a, a drag to try to just do that. But then, 
they also talk a lot during the show and and I love them to death and I don't mean any disrespect. They probably won't see the, this video, but if they do, I probably will, will be in trouble. I don't really give a shit, whatever. Um, but it's it was very distracting. So what I did was I the day that we had picked to do it, I can't really do that day anymore. But I just, the main thing is I just I want to actually be able to concentrate on the show because the show is so well done you know, in every, in every area that I was like, oh, I want to actually watch the show and enjoy it. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to watch it alone. Or if I find people who friends who, who shut the fuck up when you watch something, then I'll do that. But you can't really find that. So I'm watching it by myself with my cat. So that's what's going on. So I literally started pretty much again for the second, second or third time. So I could try to watch and really be absorbed in this world. And I was not disappointed in any way, shape, or form. And first of all, I think, like I said, HBO is the company that's responsible for Game of Thrones. And I think they are definitely, the hand, hands down, the best um, network out there that puts out television shows. They were doing it before any other network was doing it. Uh, with shows like The Sopranos, which is an, an amazing show, which is another one I eventually want to get to. Uh, Six Feet Under. Uh, so many wonderful shows. So many wonderful shows. I have um, a couple other shows that I want to get to that are HBO. And HBO is also responsible for my favorite television show of all time, and that is first season, the first season of True Detective. Amazing, amazing. I've done couple of shows on that series and I'm kind of looking forward to eventually watching it again I just I've watched that so many times and I just I fall in love with it every time but Game of Thrones I picked this up uh, a few months back actually probably about five or six months ago I picked this up I was at Goodwill this is a DVD set and I picked it up it's a full first season it was super cheap it was like 10 bucks and I was like score I'm gonna buy it I will say it would be wonderful to own this series um, on Blu-ray because visually it's so stunning. And I know most people have seen this series, but I have to say it is it is a it's a it's a work of art. It's so well done, so well crafted. I love the balance of the uh, the fantasy versus reality aspect. It's incredibly erotic and sexual it's incredibly violent and gory there is so many there's so many characters involved in this world and everything is so uh brilliant brilliantly and or masterfully fleshed out like within about five or ten minutes of the of the first episode i care about everyone and everything that i see on screen they all have personality. They all are. You all. You, you. I found myself automatically having a sense of empathy, and I cared about all of these characters. The thing about that's so great about the writing for the show is it has a level of. I mean, it's very dark, and but it has a level of where it goes into lots of un. You don't see it coming. You have to really pay attention. The film. The show is really about. You know the pursuit of power, what that entails, corruption, uh, greed. I love, and I and I love that it's subtle, and I think they slowly turn it up, but I love the fantasy element of this film. Like, it's set in a very kind of gritty, brutal reality-based uh, world, but there is these fantastical elements. There are, on the peripheral, there are, things of magic and dragons and and uh ghosts and these really great fantasy hard driven um aesthetics that kind of surround the show and i love that they kind of go into that so it kind of is in this alternate the game of thrones show is kind of set in this alternate reality uh and i just think it's it's brilliantly done brilliantly crafted and directed I mean, just so damn good. The first season, 
the first season uh, premiered on HBO in uh, 2011, which is crazy. I remember uh, a friend that I had back then had told me he had seen the pilot, and he's like, he's, and I remember him saying, "You got to check out. There's this new show called Game of Thrones." And then you know, fast forward a few years, it's it's become like you know, it became a phenomenon. Uh, the the series uh, is based on a series of books, Game of Thrones. The first novel is The Song of Ice and Fire, who was created and written by George R. R. Martin. And it was adapted by, for television by uh, David Benioff and D.B. Wise. And I have not read any of the, the books, but I've heard the books are great. But I have heard mostly that the 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 series is actually better than the books i i i i had heard one criticism or a few criticisms of the books that they were um a little bit too lengthy and where there was so much backstory that it kind of got back bogged down a little bit with the general story and the characters which i can see that happening especially if a book or a story that is very complex you have all of these, you know, things at hand that are happening. Um, and, and it has this, it, and it's fantasy driven. I think, you know, like for me, the, the, the Lord of the Rings books, um, for me personally, like they are, of course, written by Tolkien. They are classic, classic novels. My favorite has always been The Hobbit. But I've always felt that there is a little bit too much of a backstory to and descriptive uh, passages about particular things in the books that kind of go on a little bit too long. And I do, in you know, my honest opinion, I prefer the first three movies uh, that were directed by Peter Jackson. I prefer those movies to the books. They're just a little bit easier to digest and they're a little bit more cohesive, a little bit sharper, uh, you know, overall the general story. And I just really think that's wonderful. Uh, so I have a feeling, even though I have not read these books for Game of Thrones, I, I have a feeling it's probably the same thing. And that's the that's the vibe or the feeling, that, feeling I have gotten from people when they have talked about the television show versus the book. Or books. The show began uh, filming in July... Uh, 2010. Uh, primarily, it was mostly shot in uh, Northern Ireland and Malta. Really interesting. Um, the cast is just absolutely incredible. Uh, Sean Bean, amazing. Mark Addy, Michelle Fairley, Lena Headley, Amelia Clark, Ian, Ian Glenn, Harry Lloyd, Kit Harrington, Sophia Turner. Maisie Williams, Alfie Allen. I mean, just an amazing cast. The story initially takes place in a fantasy world, primarily upon the continent of Westeros, with one storyline occurring on another continent to the east, Essos. Like the novel, the season initially focuses on the family of nobleman Eddard Ned Stark and the Warden of the North, who is asked to become the King's Hand, or Chief Advisor, to his longtime friend, King Robert Baratheon. Ned seems to find out. Ned seems to seek to find out who murdered his predecessor, John Arryn. He he then uncovers uncovers dark secrets about the powerful Lannister family, which includes Robert's queen, Cersei, and his predecessor. And his pre prede predecessor died. And Cersei, his predecessor, who died trying to expose the dark uh, truth. Uh, just, just an amazing film. And again, it has, or and I, again, I just refer to it as a film. And I, and I do feel it is. But it is, it's obviously technically a television show. But it is so well done, so incredibly crafted. I, I left when I finished up the first season. I had this feeling of. I'm in it now to win it. I really want to continue watching the show, and I am. So I just started the second season, and it's uh, it's incredible. It's got everything. Um, 
you know, it's such a great example of just from top to bottom, amazing artwork, uh, amazing uh, design. The the direction for the series is just amazing. Amazing acting. The writing is just impeccable. Uh, all of the themes, the complexity, the characterization, the actors, the music. I mean, it's so well done and so well crafted. It's becoming one of my favorite television shows. And so I can't recommend it enough. And I know most people out there, unless you live in a cave like me, you know, have, you know might, might not have seen it. But I'm so excited that I've, I finally have gotten around to uh, taking the time and watching this amazing series. So stay tuned. I'm, wa I'm currently watching. I just started the second season. So stay tuned for an eventual review on that. But um, it's a masterpiece. Game of Thrones Season 1. So thanks again. And we will see you again soon. Peace.